Hello and welcome! Today I'm gonna show you a ship that is still a work in progress, which means that all her stats are still subject to change. On top of that, this is my first impression of the ship. Now, I'll show this ship uh, in port at the end of the video, um, where I will also show you my skills and upgrades, etc. But what's interesting about this ship is that uh, you get more torpedo bombers than any other ship. You get 5 torpedo bombers per squadron, and you get 3 torpedo bomber squadrons. You also get two fighter squadrons. Now, the uniqueness of the ship, obviously, is purely the torpedo bombers. That is, all of your damage will come from those. Now, I don't think you're as likely to deal much damage over time effect damage like you do on something like a Shokaku, because you simply don't have as many planes to throw at um, a ship to cause um, the opponent to use damage control party multiple times. Now, you might be able to, but I think you're much less likely to than on something like a Shokoku. Now she gets two fighters, both get uh, five fighters per squadron, this is with air superiority, uh, or air supremacy skill. Um, but even though you get two squadrons, your fighters actually still aren't that strong. You see, in terms of uh, fighter strength, the weakest at tier 8 is obviously a strike Lexington, then you get a balanced Lexington, Lexington due to only one fighter, then you get a Graf Zeppelin, uh, then you get a balanced Shokaku, and after that, the Enterprise, and obviously after that you get the air superiority loadouts. Now, this means that if you run into an opponent, like a Shokaku, with fighters, the, the Shokaku should be able to eke out a victory against you, because you don't even have that many replacements either. So, because of her torpedo bomber strength, um, I want the first target to be... A battleship and I found this nice cute Bayern here actually I find two of them even and I want to drop on them now I hadn't paid any attention to the ship before that is I went into this match blind I have no idea what the torpedo bomber drop pattern is like or anything like that so you know this is completely blind for me so I'll just drop all of them with a guess on something like okay let's zoom in to see what the pattern is like oh it's a cross pattern okay um Rip. Wow, and those last tarps weren't even necessary. I think I lost like two planes before they dropped, so three planes in total. Against the Bayern, that actually says quite a lot, right? Now, I don't know if that Bayern was air superiority or like had air anti air upgrades in any way, but that's actually. I didn't expect to lose three planes against a ship that's two tiers lower, especially a stuck Bayern. But I guess it is what it is. Now. The thing with the Graf Zeppelin is also that uh, on top of the fact that you get more torpedo bombers, those torpedo bombers have a higher amount of damage. You see, uh, most other torpedo bombers have slightly less than 9000 maximum damage, but Graf Zeppelin gets about 10% more at 10,500, so your torpedo bombers do deal more damage. Now, this means that Graf Zeppelin potentially has an incredible strike. Um, that is, her alpha strike will be off the charge. Y you think a Kaga was crazy, this thing is gonna put Kaga to shame. However, of course you don't have the dive bomber follow-up to, you know, if something happens to the drop and, you know, your torpedoes aren't as fast as Kaga's. Now, I haven't really tried this against um, higher tier targets. You see, um, because of uh, a very enraging event that happened uh, when I was playing, I um, only played two matches with her and then uh, kind of, you know, stopped and have been playing other games. But, um, so I don't have as much experience against higher tier targets. I've only been in tier 6 to 8 matches. And in these, the Graf Zeppelin has been incredibly uh, devastating. Oh, and it seems the opposing Lexington is strike, which means that I have free reign here. So basically, I should be able to devastate, uh, well... The, opponent, the opponent's carriers, or carrier planes. And this is why actually, you see, I can see the Lexington in the minimap, but I guess it's not actually important anymore that the Lexington was there, because I don't think it's worth wasting a lot of time trying to kill that Lexington, because I think it's much more likely that the Lexington isn't going to be able to do much for a long time, because I should be able to control her quite nicely. I mean, look at this. Uh, she managed to drop one torpedo bomber. One torpedo bomber was able to drop. And 
Well, some dive bombers, yes, but I got all the planes, basically. And uh, meanwhile, I can basically farm with my own strikes. So, what do I think about um, this kind of a loadout? I think that for tier 6 to 8, this is too much. Um, it's too much. It's just too much. There is too much alpha strike with these torpedo bombers. Now, do I think that this is something you can't absolutely fight against? No, absolutely not. I think that put put this ship against like competent players, it's no problem. The issue is just that in random battles, you aren't against only competent enemies. And carriers are the ships that will, you know, go and pick on those that are weaker. Okay, so another drop on a Byron. I'll just do what I did before. And, well, rip again. Only eight torpedoes necessary again. So, I think that um, against experienced players, this makes very little difference. Because experienced players will obviously know that if they are against the tier 8 carriers, tier 6 ships, they will try to hug uh, something that has good anti-air, they will position themselves better, etc, etc. It, it's viable to fight against this. The problem is that carriers can pick whoever they want to strike and by the movements of enemy ships you can tell whether a player more or less is good or not against carriers. So you can go and pick on targets that aren't as good and I think that this is going to fuel um, the same opinion as with Kaga that uh, the Graf Zeppelin will be considered insanely overpowered if you know she doesn't get changed. Because everything is an alpha strike, it doesn't matter if... Uh, even if the potential damage output on the Graf Zeppelin actually loses to a uh, Shokaku because you maybe you don't have as much um, a damage over time effect. However, you know, players will see that they get one shot from full HP and go like, well, this is too much. And I kind of agree. Um, while I don't think it's much of an issue for me, I can completely understand where they're coming from. And honestly, playing a carrier like this means that you can do this consistently to enemy players because they simply don't do the right things. And, you know, it's a very difficult to teach somebody to play the right way against these kinds of carriers because it's not about... Uh, also, if you noticed, my fighters actually... I tried to spot torpedoes from the Loyang for the Warspite, just in case. But it's very difficult to teach somebody this because it's not one action that saves you from carries like this it, it has more to do with your positioning the ships you are next to um, all those kinds of things basically add up and that what's more or less keeps you somewhat safe from the carriers so it's something that's difficult to learn and unfortunately this means that many players will have trouble against carriers like the Kaga and Graf Zeppelin and I can completely understand this. And this is why I don't like the fact that we're getting these massive alpha strike carriers. I think it would be much better if we got uh, more damage over time focused carriers. So instead of making the torpedo bombers deal uh, 10,000 damage, make them deal, I don't know, 4,000 or 5,000 damage. So the alpha strike on them ends up being weak. However, uh, let's say you have four torpedo bomber squadrons each, but, but each torpedo deals 4,000 damage. In those cases, um, your alpha strike is actually weaker, but you could actually cause damage over time effects. And the reason why damage over time effects are better, also this uh, this this North Carolina does not have um, any anti-air upgrades. Also, I activate my uh, defensive fire because planes are incoming. And uh, yeah, Karen, this is not a good idea. Like he is not gonna be very successful. Although. I didn't shoot down that many planes here, but this time I'll get the strafe from behind, so I'll be fine. Uh, the priority is obviously on the torpedo bombers, because dive bombers, while they might set the fire, they probably won't kill me. Torpedo bombers might. So the reason why um, it's better to have damage over time effects to fight against than um, alpha strife e strike effects is that, first of all, it makes the... Um, Weaker players have the illusion that, you know, they're not as screwed as they actually are. And the other reason is that uh, it gives you more time to react. That is, uh, if you get attacked with the first strike, you might be able to get into um, a defensive position for the second one. For instance, you might, you might get near, uh, I don't know, an air superiority or 
you know, a strong anti-air cruiser, or maybe your friendly carrier will come and help you. Both of these cases lessen the uh, uh, threat of damage over time strikes much, much more than they, you know, lessen the threat for strike carriers like the Graf Zeppelin. But yeah, this, this, this Lexington is losing all their planes. However, the problem is that um, even though I told them that uh, we shouldn't try to chase the Lexington, it seems that our Harakaza and Bayern have been chasing that Lexington. Now, what the Tirpitz is doing at sea is kind of okay, because she is fighting for sea, which, you know, is a good idea. But the Harakaze? No, I think that's a really bad idea. I think the Harakaze should in in instantly be inside the sea cap to try to, to try to defend as much as possible, because the position of the Harakaze right now means that he's not contributing to trying to win, and he's chasing an air superiority car- or, sorry, a strike carrier that is getting basically deplaned. Not quite, but more or less. So I see that there's this Miyoko coming for my ship, and this means that I want to take her out as quickly as possible. Now she used uh, defensive fire, but since you know I haven't played this ship before, I want to see what the pa drop pattern actually is like under defensive fire, so I'll go ahead with the drop anyway. What you should do is you should uh, back off uh, and you know strike again in like 30 seconds. In that case, you'll be fine. Although, oh my, oh my, I only hit two turps. Okay, that's actually pretty bad. Wow, this drop pattern is crazy bad under defensive fire. Which I guess is a good thing considering how ridiculously much strike power they get. And the good thing is that this made the Miyoko turn around, which means that she has trouble actually getting to me. Now, again, the Harakaze chasing the Lexington really, really, really bad. Because this puts... I can't really defend this Harakaze easily because she is so close to this Lexington. And the other thing is that the Harakaze, again, is not doing anything for the sea cap. Or, you know, trying to even take out the opponents because we lost our Tirpitz in the sea cap. And now we are four ships against seven and they have two cap points and 300 points lead. So this is really, really bad for us. But I'll tr still try my best. I think those planes were landing, so unfortunately that's why the strafe didn't work. Okay, uh, there's a Leander coming now with the uh, Miyoko. Which is um, a problem, especially since we're down to three ships against five, and they have 800 points. Oh boy. Okay, so one torpedo should finish the Miyoko, and I think I'll need like three for the Leander, but this means I need at least two squadrons for the Leander. Because the Miyoko doesn't have defensive fire, I will focus on the Miyoko. Although I am actually slightly afraid that the Atlanta coming might have defensive fire and might use it for the Miyoko. Oh, oh no, the Miyoko is slowing down. I'm not sure if that torpedo is going to hit her. Yeah, I don't think that's actually going to happen. Damn, I missed the torp. Okay, well, the good thing is that at least the Leander turned around because uh, she was afraid of my drop. Just like the Miyoko, and okay, this time the drop is gonna be fine. I'll hit at least one torp on the Miyoko, and I will try to hit the Leander now. Excellent, Miyoko is down. So now there's only an Atlanta and a Leander, right? Only. Anyways, um, oh come on, I keep messing this up. Okay, the Miyoko, the Leander is using smoke. Uh, I think I'm forcing it right now. I don't think I can drop here. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna hit. Because the torpedo on the edge is not going to arm in time. And I tried to get behind this mountain so that, uh, you know, they won't be able to strike me again or shoot me. Also, unfortunately, yeah, that torp did not hit. Now I'm afraid that this Atlanta might have defensive fire. I really hope she doesn't, or at least that she doesn't use it. Because we're still in a 3 against uh, 4, and um, the enemy team is already at 900 points, and I'm being shot at. No, I'm not that worried about the Leander, though, because um, Leander has AP, which means that her damage output is going to be difficult. I'll try focusing on the Atlanta, because she has HE, right? Which means that uh, her damage is going to be more of a problem, especially because it can cause uh, fires, which means that I won't be able to launch my planes anymore. Okay, this looks actually really, really good. I think this Atlanta is dead. So now it's time to finish the lander. 
Yep, goodbye Atlanta. Oh, only one turf required. And now the Leander is turning away. Oh, no, no, she's not turning away anymore. Okay. Well, I think I should still hit one tarp on her. Excellent. 9,000 damage. This is not something you will see on other carries. Now she'll probably turn in again. Oh, I'm not sure if this tarp drop was actually good enough. Actually, I think the last tarp might hit. Oh no, two even hit. Wow. Goodbye, I guess, Leander. That was a rather lucky drop. And now it's time to try to enter the A-cap. Just for... Um, just for fun, because it doesn't matter. We have to take out this... Actually, no, we don't necessarily have to take out this Lexington. But we should. Okay, well, some more Lexington planes being donated. What? Oh, wow. That only took out one plane. I'm really surprised by that. Well, regardless, um, we have taken out all the other ships, so now it's just time to try to strafe these planes down. Wow, so few plane kills on this. Eh, whatever. Uh, the Lexington has very little health and we still have three ships. I still think the Harekaza and the Bayern trying to chase the Lexington was a terrible idea. But it magically worked out fine, mostly because I was able to take out the three cruisers that came for me. I mean, think about it, they invested three ships to try to take me out. And all, all three ships were sunk instead of being able to do anything to me. So what I'll do now is I will just go one by one and drop. Because I don't know if we're going to have enough time to try to finish this. Because, you know, there's a battleship firing at her and uh, a DD as well. So I'll just go one by one. I know defensive fire is going to ruin it, etc. But I think it should be okay. I only need like one or two tarps and that should finish it. Also, uh, if you've been reading the chat, I've, b I've kept complaining about these guys chasing the Lexington. And for some reason, Daydreamer seemed to think that I was talking about him. Obviously, I wasn't, because he was not the one chasing. But you know, it's a misunderstanding, unfortunately. Okay, uh, well, only two fit dropped into the water, but one is gonna hit. And that's goodbye to the Lexington. And remember, this is my first game in the ship. That's 7 kills, 30 torpedo hits, 59 planes shot down, 18 foddings, 942,000 credits. Although I think some of that is from a mission. So I got 2400 base XP. I uh, compliment, obviously, uh, Terpitz because he actually tried fighting for the sea cap, which was a really good idea. Now, 189,000 of this damage came from Alpha Strike. And this is precisely what I meant earlier. I don't think it's a good idea that um, they get so much Alpha Strike. Oh, I actually didn't get any credits for a mission. So this 900,000 credits is literally from being a premium carrier plus the fact that I have a plus 20% credits camo. Wow. So let's take a look at the Graf Zeppelin in port. She does look gorgeous. Look at this. She looks really, really nice. At least the ship itself. So let's take a look at her stats. So she has 52,600 health. Um, her armor seems to be um, okay-ish for a carrier. For a tier 8 carrier at least. Um, she gets a total of 72 planes, which is the same as the Shokaku. Um, she also, most of them are obviously torpedo bombers. She does get some secondaries, but I wouldn't really uh, rely on them because you're a carrier after all. Her anti air isn't um, that great 110 at 4.5 kilometers, uh, 125 at 3.5 kilometers, and uh, 49 at 2 kilometers. So this isn't actually that strong of uh, an anti air setup. However, you know, you're a tier 8 carrier, so you definitely have defensive fire. Maneuverability wise, she has. Uh, a decent rudder shift, decent speed, but horrible turning circle as is normal for carriers. And concealment 14 kilometers and 12.4 kilometers. And this is not with concealment expert though. So these are the upgrades I use on her. So I go with air groups modification 1, then obviously fighter health because you are going to fight other carrier fighters, which means that you need this upgrade. This upgrade is just too good to pass up. 
Otherwise, this might be useful because, you know, faster servicing time is useful. In the first defensive slot, I use damage control system modification 1, but I actually think that defensive AA fire modification 1 might be better. Uh, that is, with the change, now you can put it in, into this slot, which is really, really nice because you get the longer defensive fire. But I'm not sure how useful it is going to be on Kairos, and I think I might just save these for, like, cruisers. In the second offensive slot, obviously, damage control system modification 2, because you want less fire and flooding time, because that is the, your main, uh, the main way you end up dead, usually. And, obviously, concealment in the last slot. Commander skill-wise, I just used an 11-point captain, because, unfortunately, surprise, surprise, I don't have a German Kyra captain. So, the first skill that you want is Aircraft Servicing Expert, uh, then you want Torpedo Acceleration, Torpedo Armament Expertise, and Air Supremacy, and then Dogfighting Expert. These 11 points, in my opinion, are basically the basic carrier build. Like, pretty much every carrier should generally have this kind of a base build. After that, you know, with the last 8 points up to 19, you can do basically whatever you want. Generally, you go for concealment and then AFT or uh, manual fire control. You might also skip AFT and go for these two, or concealment and go for these two. Basically, it's up to you, but, you know, this is what I would recommend the basic on every single carrier. I think, at least. Maybe on some, it's not as important to take torpedo acceleration. It depends on how you feel about it, I suppose. There just isn't really that much better to take anyway. So yeah, the Graf, the Graf Zeppelin. I think she's too strong for random battles. I think that her uh, alpha strike is going to cause too much trouble for um, players that aren't very, very experienced at the game. And I think that's going to get her labor massively overpowered. Especially since at tier 8 there is no Saipan to keep you down with their fighters. So I think that if she doesn't change, which... She might change because, again, work in progress. She would be a very, very, very powerful carrier for random battles. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Duncan. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.